now, running with Van Halen. Well, Van Halen was just like a local, uh, local rivals, actually. I was in a kind of a junior high, high school type band, and the Van Halen's Edward and Alex had their setup going, and Michael was across town with his own setup, you know, just kind of uh, high school kids make, trying to make rock and roll. And, you know, one guy would want to be a lawyer or a doctor or something and move on, quit the band. And, and that's, that's what our they, parents wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it kept going on like that, you know, until we found each other. We knew we had to, you know, get together with other people who wanted to really get out and make records, get out and travel, get out and do something with the music, you know. And that's difficult to find, and we were lucky that we found each other. We started playing uh, backyard parties, high school functions, dances, churches, churches weddings, weddings, bar mitzvahs. We played <laughs> everywhere we possibly could. And uh, eventually we played in the bars, started getting into the bar scene, you know, five, 45 minute sets a night, you know. And you really got me. And that was one of like the 300 songs that we played at the bars by other people. Yeah. Played the bars, but you can't play original material there, really. You know, people want to dance. You know, hey, and he wanted to go dance. You know, they don't want to be distracted by something they aren't familiar with. And so uh, we started to rent little halls and throw these shows. You know, we like moved our backyard parties in where we would charge a dollar a head into the halls. We rented to the Pasadena Civic, which is of course a hometown first. And we moved all over the Southern California area. We'd do it down in Orange County. We'd do it in the San Fernando Valley. We'd go out near San Bernardino, you know. It wasn't all just like one place. And we'd throw our own shows, put out flyers, posters, you know. It's the only places we could really play our own music. You know, do a complete Van Halen show without playing other people's material. So we said, hey, if we're good enough to be as big as we really want to be, you know, travel as far as we want, then we'll get discovered. You know, we'll build our audience and people will talk and go, oh, hey, you got to see this band tomorrow night. You know, I saw them last night. And then a friend of a secretary would tell somebody. And basically, that's what happened with Warner Brothers is the word started to filter down. You know, hey, Van Halen's, you know, cooking around and so forth and so on. And, you get the write-ups in the Times. Uh, yeah. Previous to that, uh, Mo Austin, the president of Warner Brothers, and Ted Templeman, our producer to be, came and saw us one crummy Monday night. We were playing for free in a Hollywood bar. And uh, <laughs> it was about 10 people out there. Yeah, oh. you know, and they saw us play and they came backstage right away after the set and said, hey, let's sign. Our uh, first album took us about three and a half weeks, I'd say, and that's on the outside, closer to three. The actual recording of the music and the singing took about three weeks, three and a half weeks. Records were new to us. We didn't know, you know, we figured, hey, all we can do is maybe try and reproduce Van Halen as it really is, which is our concept, you know, very few overdubs, almost no studio wizardry done to it, you know and that we could go out and do it live and impress people live, which we had been doing for several years. But the record, we didn't know. We'll join Van Halen on the road after this. Here's Van Halen backstage and in concert. We went on our first United States tour with a couple of bands, Journey and Montrose. We were third bill and smaller halls, which were like three to 5,000 seats. And we've been continuing touring since that time. We've been around the world. We went through Europe and we did England, 22 cities. We went to Japan, Japan for several weeks. Japan. Time to rock and roll. Yeah. Which usually runs in together these days and nights, you know? With the high point of last night. The high point of last night is the low point of tonight. See? I gotta take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you? You're the one about the. Uh, 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 there's two guys walking down the street. There's two guys walking down the street. See? An old Chinese proverb say, man who walked down the street. Not crazy, just feel nuts. 
That's not true. Here we go! The Japanese were... <laughs> and it's been that way all around the world. Been there like Belgium and France, Holland, where a uh, great many of the people don't understand what we're saying in between the songs on stage. They, they don't speak English, but they know what Van Halen is playing for you. And then they'll pick up the record, you know, or they've got and came to see the live show. We played some incredibly out of the way places. We played a little town called Popering in Belgium, which is like way out even from Brussels. We had to drive for hours through these little towns. And uh, they came. <laughs> and there was, you know, several thousand people showed up in a little uh, barn type place. And everybody got crazy and they all said, yeah, in the right places and, and you know. And uh, it's been that way all around the world. In England, it's a different, uh, it's different than the United States over there. It's a different sort of society. They treat their rock and roll a little more seriously over in England. And uh, they sure treated Van Halen seriously. Yeah, fans <laughs> over there, they're hardcore fans for life. tables and he starts to tune up and somebody puts some rock on the tape player you know and have a little drink table. you know and start dancing and singing say hello to people and then you brush your head say hello to somebody else and then drink put your clothes on and a little more and complain drink a beer you know and you're getting ready and as the time goes on it's like you can feel it i there's no clocks you know, I don't wear a watch. It's like all of a sudden you feel the time approaching, you know. Now, the other night, we got held up. Everybody was ready for the 8 o'clock show. 8 o'clock came, and our road manager comes and goes, ah, 10 more minutes. And then all of a sudden, that's when you start to come on glued and you go, ah, you got all this excess energy. So that's when the buffet went. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and the table went. 
And then we were ready. Ten minutes later, we were ready. We were ready, baby. We were ready to go. We are ready to hit that stage. We were ready right now. We really just comes got a break, in. and it ain't going to be us. <laughs> and, the, and the road manager comes in and says, All right, gentlemen, it is time to rock and roll. Oh, wait a second. Wait, there's no oil on my side of the stage. Wait a minute. Is there. Final hair check. Final hair check. Yep, Northern, Northern Marcus. Last night I broke my no, leg. There's oil in front of my hand. I'm, I'm running around. Slip. I don't know what's cracked, man. I got to tie my shoes. Yeah, yeah. New step, man. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm practicing the young part. Thank you. All right, Brown. Let's do it. David? You guys, guys, are a little sexy. All right. Come on. Lots of smiles. All right. Yeah. Work together. Don't blow it out in the first song. Blow it out in the third one. <laughs> nah, really. Yeah, yellow floor right there. Slippery. Watch yellow stuff. Going up on the stage right side. Oh, I can't see a thing, man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Summer, shows. summer, yeah. Played the Dallas Jam with Aerosmith and Nugent. We played the uh, Oakland Day on the Green. We played with the Stones, the Superdome. Biggest and indoor crowd they ever had. That was incredible. That was standing up in front of 83,000 people and, and asking them a yes question and hearing 83,000 go, yes! It's a definite show. It sounds like a jet plane taking off. All right, brothers. Yeah, go ahead, man. It's a high water up there. Oh, man. It's like floggy, guys. This is warm. It's warm out there. Hey, pay all money. Don't do a job. Pay all money. Another one down. Missing? I was, uh, <laughs> what's that, one of your father's jokes? What are you, what are your mother's? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to have a shot of Southern Comfort with us? Let's have a shot for St. Louis. Yeah! Uh, Detroit, Detroit Cleveland. Hey, guys. With a Jack Daniels back. <laughs> yeah, what a show. 
What a girl. Where are we going tomorrow? Where are we headed Kansas, tomorrow? Kansas, 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 Kansas City. City. Yeah. Hey, I go to run up to Noah just before we hit the back of the stage. I go, what state are we in? I know it's St. Louis, but I want to yell the state. Mark gives me a look like what do you ask me for, man? No, 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 no. And meanwhile, he's going, oh, my God, what state are we in? And the crowd's going crazy, and Mark's going, hey, man, don't bother me with that stuff. I guess I am state of mind. Mark, that. So I ran up to, I'm running on stage, and he stops asking hey, some Joe by the side. He says, hey, what state are we in? Kansas, Kansas. The guy goes, the state of confusion. <laughs> Everybody's screaming. The state of mind. Oh, <laughs> Right. How do you run the lights with that bottle in your hand? I try, uh, I try to have a nipple in each nostril. It's, it's an important thing for the show. Not a lot of people aren't into it, but I really uh, either in each nostril. If they're really not large enough, maybe a ear. You know? No, wait a here, second. Here, 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 here. Do something serious here. Bombarded, 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 bombarded,